Um, I'm just here, Nikki Wilson, director and founder of Jupiter Artland, and I'm sitting in the middle of Jupiter Artland on a sunny day. Jupiter is based just outside Edinburgh in Scotland, and unbelievably, we've got a beautiful sunny day. Um, so I am um, thrilled to be speaking to you, although I'm just looking at myself. So at the moment, you are looking at um, probably one of the sculptures that Jupiter Outland's best known for, which is Cells of Life, which is the first commission that um, I made with my husband, Robert. To give you a little bit of a background, um, Jupiter Outland surrounds Bollington House, which is the family home of um, myself and my husband and my five children and seven dogs. Um, we had a lot of land uh, around and about us, which was uh, policies just set aside, um, very scrubby. Um, and I suppose one of the things that happened was that we got to know that bit of land um, and we decided that we wanted to make use of it, open it up to the public and um, develop a commissioning programme that could really challenge artists. I am a sculptor myself and so um, I was longing to get back into um, making sculpture but also being with artists. I had just moved from London and had lots and lots of children and was feeling a little bit overwhelmed anyway. Little did I know that I would pick up the telephone and to Charles Jones and he would answer it. I mean those were the days, of, uh, I, was, I think it was 2006, that people actually answered their own telephones which was wonderful, landline that is. He was in the yellow pages under farms um, it was great. So he answered and said, yes, I'll come and visit you. And that was the moment where Jupiter Artland began. He walked through the gates and I said, look, you know, I, I, I love your landforms. Uh, they are exactly what I'm wanting to sort of really practice in this area. You know, that the, 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 I want the land to be honoured and I want people to enjoy the land and I want something exceptional in West Lothian. And he said, yes, let's work together. And for the next five years, I, when I say we worked together, we really worked together. We stood in Wellington boots with a little tiny plaster scene model and worked out where each man should go. And this is an incredibly personal um, uh, commission because this is the metastasizing of cells and sometimes the corrupt cells, cancer. So. With uh, Charles's background of um, losing his wife Maggie to breast cancer, he, you know, it was a, a very powerful um, symbol of life and the mysteries of the universe. Um, and but it, uh, on the other hand, it also had, because of the scale, it was a huge monument. Um, these are enormous mounds, and children are allowed to play on them, roll down them, slide down them, climb up them along the paths. People swim in the ponds. It's a, a really active um, area that is really important to the park. But I suppose the most important thing about this work is that you drive through it. So it, was, it, it set the standard right from the very beginning that Jupiter Artland wanted to really transport you into a different world. Um, it also set the tone for the commissioning programme. And this is a much later piece of work by a, a, a wonderful artist, Phila de Barlow, who taught me at Art College at Camberwell and then again in my MA at Chelsea. And I finally persuaded her to do an outdoor permanent commission here. And it, to see those beech trees, if you look at this image here, you'll see that they're, it, it, I mean, they are 50, 60 feet high. These are huge, almost co concrete trees. They're sort of kind of violent and sexy at the same time and architectural. And there's a set of kind of um, almost broken steps, sort of kind of a stairway to heaven or a, a ruin that has just been found in the woods. The tree shapes at the top are really sky frames and they were sort of designed to look at the sky and admire the um, blue, occasional blue 
quite often snow and quite often grey. What was brilliant about Philido is that she brought to her commission, the commission, her own hands. So there you can see the brush strokes, the daubs. It was, it is a really a magnificent thing to be able to feel the hand of the artist on that scale. But I think it beautifully emulates the commissioning process, belief and process. It, this piece is really about landscape, the art, the sculpture, and the viewer. And in this piece, you are standing in the middle of the three columns and or the two columns and the staircase, and you feel engaged to either climb up or to touch or to be part of this installation. It's a, a, a very successful and beautiful piece of work. And although it looks incredibly fragile, it's now um, four years old and actually is surviving really quite well despite the snow. This is our slightly different one. It's a, a piece by uh, Pablo Bronstein. And Pablo is an artist that um, I had admired because he uses um, sculpture to activate, architect architecture to activate uh, spaces and scu uh, the sculptural method and the magic to create places where you can do a performance. And this piece, Rose Walk, um, were, is a, has a chinoiserie end, which you can see just here, and then a gothic end at the other end. And throughout it are these beautiful white Canterbury roses. The pavilion is meant to be walked through and you're meant to be able to surround, you're meant to be surrounded by this architecture. You're meant to be transported into almost a sort of theatrical environment, but also you are meant to sort of activate the space by either getting married or proposing to someone, having a picnic, a kiss, all these beautiful things in this space. It's very romantic, but it's also got a, a slightly sinister quality to it because it's oversized and out of scale for the, the landscape. And that's where Pablo is very clever about using the architecture and the language of architecture. It is a fairy tale inside. I mean, we've had all sorts of hilarious things happen in there. I mean, we didn't finish the piece until the very last minute. And um, it was, uh, a piece that actually was still had wet white paint on it and it was Robert Nine Midnight still painting the, the sculpture. It was a, a piece that was very tightly uh, to the wire and that actually at that moment we had a very well-known artist called James Terrell we were showing him around and you can see those chairs just in there. Well that was where James Terrell sat to rest Unfortunately, those chairs were wet, so he walked around for the rest of the day with these white stripes on his back. But, you know, these things happen. And actually, what was remarkable about James and Pablo is that they realised that the sculpture was, you know, meant so much. It was a private commission, but being open to the public and that, you know, everybody that was at Jupiter was getting involved, making it perfect for, for the artist. There's a really lovely photograph, which I'm going to show you this one here, which shows you the sort of the overall environment of Jeeps Rutland. We live in a sort of kind of, a, a, a sort of industrial landscape where we've had, um, it used to be called the Texas of the North. So shale bings were um, created. That was where they, they mined ground and then they extracted oil paraffin from it. Um, and they created these beautiful red mounds everywhere. I, and it became a sort of a place where beautiful houses were built, but then of course the paraffin was um, sort of defunct and it meant that the area became very poor actually. I mean, and it's, it's but it, yet it has this rolling landscape and these policies and these houses dotted all around it. So this little bit of grandeur that's popping up through these woods, is a sort of a, a kind of a glimpse of what this area used to be like, but also a sort of a magic that this area has um, and its hidden past. If we go on, um, we show another artist, and I suppose I'd probably really like to talk about this piece the most. It was last year's um, permanent commission, 
and it was uh, by Rachel McLean. Uh, you'll notice there are some strong women, I'm going to talk about that later. Rachel McLean is a phenomenal artist from uh, Scotland. She represented Scotland in the Venice Biennale four years ago and um, is extremely successful. She works in film, uh, hasn't often worked in sculpture to this extent, but she came and we commissioned her to make a, make a shop. And this shop is called the Upside Down Mimi Store. Um, it was a really interesting commissioning process um, and it is a major project for Jupiter and I think for Rachel as well. And it was had the, the joy of being a lockdown project. So we were able to work on it very quietly throughout lockdown, just getting this ready. As you can see, it's a sort of saccharine, sweet, spooky, kind of yellowy, kind of Disney um, facade of a shop. Everything's upside down. And as you go closer in and look at the image, you'll see that the bottom is really quite uh, well, dishevelled and broken up. And the top is immaculate. And you can see the bottom here with the upside down Mimi image. I'm actually just going to put you back to this image because you can also see the hearts in front of the sculpture, which are little hearts with stars on them, sort of little ma Disney magic dust that you follow throughout the wood and you pick up um, a, a little pathway and that takes you to the Mimi Superstore. It's meant to be spooky. It's meant to give you the feeling of hands on Gretel. It's meant to have a door ajar and a sort of slightly kind of welcoming and uncomfortable um, way. And then you walk in and it's got one product. It's called, got the Mimi doll that you can see, if you look closely, hanging in the middle of the, in the window. And there's just lots and lots of them. And this is an upside down doll, which one side is beautiful, the other side is ugly and old. It's a really interesting um, conversation about sort of childish femininity and it's worthy of, um, you know, the Disney um, nightmares, except it isn't really Disney. It has a sort of more serious side to it. This project was um, a, a very influential in a big project that we have, which is called Jupiter Plus, which is the uh, project that's going to start this September, which is leaving the walls of Jupiter and going into the environs in various places in Scotland. And this was with a group of young people who were helping to kind of talk about what they were interested in and what they wanted to see. And actually what they wanted to see was something that changed their own environment. They were fed up with their um, high streets looking so desperate and everything being so bleak. And then particularly in lockdown where everything got much quieter and more, more sort of abandoned, they, this, this has become a major concern for young people. Where do young people go? And so this upside down store is really a, an encapsulation of those frustrations, that those, those um, uh, concerns from young people. And I'm pleased to say that we are now on a very interesting start of a project where we will be going to cities, Perth and Air, where we'll be making uh, these, this shop, it's um, a very close replica of it, and the film that's inside it, which is uh, all about Mimi and a journey that she has, um, will be available to everybody in Scotland. This really keys in with our um, education programme, which was formed at the same time as Jupiter Artland, where um, we, we had a rather grand and very ambitious um, wish that we could um, get every child in Scotland to, to have a bit of that magic that you get when you come through enormous magical um, mounds or get to swim in the Jenks or you get to see a Mimi in the, in the, the sculpture here or you get to dance down Pablo Bronstein's um, uh, Rose Walk. So we're, we're very committed to making sure that every child gets that engagement with art. Um, and we're 
very keen that and, re, and, and understand and are expert in delivering a program which is um, sort of basically awakens curiosity and allows a young person to develop their own sense of self and be able to be proud of the words that come out of their mouths that they like art or don't like art. It, you know, it's it's giving a young person the ability and the uh, confidence to speak for themselves, to be able to have their own back, to understand that their point of view is valid. These are our young people and they are going to be our future. And whatever happens in terms of Scotland and its independence or, you know, and Great Britain, these young people have been more affected um, than probably any other part of the population in terms of being kind of bored and needing to have uh, being reignited by um, art uh, well, by by anything and art is an extraordinarily powerful place to start so upside down Mimi and Rachel McLean a phenomenal artist and do look her up afterwards there's all sorts of wonderful films online I'm actually also going to talk about a very dear artist, Christian Botansky. Christian sadly passed away last year, but this is a really important piece for me personally. This is called Animatas. And you will, it's hard, I wish I could put a video on for you to hear. There are tiny, I'm just going to go forward so you can see. Oh, no, that's back. There's beautiful little bells. So you can you see that they are sort of these temple bells and underneath are these prayer um sort of flags and if I go back again there are hundreds of them and they are placed in a very precise uh, way it, it is the star sign for Christian Boltansi's moment of birth and it makes that all more poignant that we have his moment of birth but we and we have also got a recording of his heartbeat but he's no longer here on earth but we have these bells that keep ringing. Christian is very well known for his work which evoked the holocaust death he's a very deep profound dark work here he uses the outside to sort of animate and um, the these prayer bells and because we're in mycelia and there's lots of wind we have and there are 175 bells the pond is suffused with the ringings of bells it's almost it's quite transcendental and um, kind of brings tears to my eyes looking at this piece because he was a really, really lovely man and he couldn't abide the countryside and he did come and stay with us. We have a very, we're very lucky that we uh, get to spend time with artists and because quite often they're installing work and they're spending time getting to know us and knowing the land, um, it's not a, ever an hour's process, it's several days and we get to drink lots of wine with these artists and we get to know them often quite well. And with Christian, he, I remember him sitting at the kitchen table and looking out at the fields and saying, I really don't like countryside. I really don't like countryside. But yet, when he went for a walk with my husband, Robert, um, he just found this little island and he said, that's where I want to have my work. That is perfect. And, you know, I, I think that is the magic of Jupiter, really, this landscape, um, winning over an artist who never felt very comfortable in landscape. Um, it, if you can spend time doing research into Christian Boltanski, you will be um, rewarded thoroughly. Uh, it's his work is both moving and visceral and um, it makes me very proud that we have a piece like that. I'm going to go on to the next piece here. Yes, these little bells. I have to say the maintenance on this is a total nightmare. The swans absolutely adore yanking each one of those bells, throwing them into the pond and um, fluffing their feathers. So we're constantly having to retie them on. And it's a really difficult dichotomy. You know, can't get rid of the swans because they're lovely, uh, but, you know, really fed up that they like to wreck Sculpture Park. But it, luckily it's resilient and it gets mended endlessly. 
but it's a it's a it's a very rewarding. Right. This is Joanna Vasconcelos, and I suppose why I'm moving on to her is that she is one of the very strong women that we have um, uh, engaged with in in Jupiter, and it's part of the uh, collection. And Joanna um, created this extraordinary swimming pool. She's a uh, Portuguese artist known for her extravagances, but she is also very connected to the land. And uh, one of the connections each work has is that when you bring an artist to a landscape they will pick up what that land means to them so they will understand whether they call it a geomancy or a, 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 a an energy land energy or a ley line they will feel it because they are artists that have got a, uh, their shields have been removed and they, they, they are sensitive and they pick up nuances. So this is one of these pieces that actually has, if you see these bubbles here, a landline through uh, a ley line almost all the way through the pool. And unbelievably, this is a swimming pool in the middle of Scotland, freezing Scotland, and it's seldom used. But there are my one or two of my five children, um, Yes, modelling um, for Joanna's bathing costumes as well. But it is used by the public every day, and it is um, some. It, it is a very special and exquisite thing to have. You you get the pool to yourself, and you have the most lovely time swimming in quite lukewarm water in uh, in a, a on a ley line, empowered. A similar shape but a completely different person is Helen Chadwick. Helen Chadwick taught me at art college. I'm an enormous fan of her work. She died sadly in 1996 and was a great, great loss to the art artist community. This is a phenomenal piece of work which, of which I, it is not an original. It's, uh, it's one of an edition, but it was uh, it had to come because it's so essential to my artistic practice or and also uh, an inspiration to a whole, I suppose, generation of young women artists. This is uh, Piss Flowers. She peed in the snow. So the proboscis of the flower is the, the, the woman's pee and her boyfriend peed around and about and he created the flowers. So the phallus is the woman's urine and the petals are the, uh, the a man's. And then she created all these beautiful, beautiful flowers, which are by our cafe. And they're covered in little stalactites. And they're a reminder of, you know, pretty is not pretty, beauty is not beauty. Everything has a sharp edge and a twist. These are pissed flowers. Beautiful, but lethal and full of piss. Anyway, they're uh, a great pride to me and um, you might, if you have time, please come and see them. I am now moving on to what I think is probably the most, one of the most exciting parts of this year, which is that we're um, showing Tracy M and um, I, it, this is a phenomenal bronze. It's called I Lay Here For You. And it's been actually lying here for a year now, waiting to be able to be open to the public properly. It's being um, uh, alongside this, the opening of this sculpture, which uh, I'm, I'm gonna talk about in a minute, is a show of brand new work by Tracy Emmon. It's uh, all new paintings and all new lithographs and drawings and some sculptures as well. So we're immensely proud that Tracy um, has chosen to open her second show of the year here. And I suppose I, I, all I can say about this work is that the intimacy is extraordinary. You come upon this beautiful, beautiful bronze in the texture of the, I hope there's another sculpture, yes there is, of, and the, the sumptuous colour, the matte quality of the bronze, the sighting of it is so important. It has, everything lends to this sort of grave image of this sort of broken, but yet sensuous, um, female that is powerful and vulnerable and exposed and yet powerful. And 
there she is lying in the woods surrounded by these beautiful beech trees in a secret glade and she is there to be discovered we're alongside all the other drawings that Tracy and the paintings that Tracy has done over lockdown. Um, she currently has a show in uh, Margate which focuses on um, death and this is a, a, a different um, take, this is love and this is sort of love and the feeling alive and what that means to be alive and not necessarily well, but love, uh, that what part love has to play in that and that vulnerability of your own body, the love of your own body and the love of another human being. I, I ask you to come and visit us. It is a, a, a wonderful show. We're very busy at the moment installing it. And uh, it will, I haven't seen everything up yet, but it is going to be phenomenal. This bronze will be here for ever this belongs to at Jupiter to Jupiter and it will be always and forevermore safe in its glade she is lying there waiting for you and um, I we look forward to welcoming you um, I'd like to thank you very much for joining us it's been a, a really nice thing to be able to chat to myself for a half an hour and I don't know if I made any sense at all but we'd love you to come and visit and thank you very much Bloomberg for doing such a great series with Art UK I think that's wonderful and um, I hope to see some of you at Jupiter Artland at some point in the meantime thank you for coming and sharing my little droning on for a while anyway it's lovely to meet you bye bye